Anthony Albanese, thanks very much for your time. Donald Trump Jr. has criticised Labor in a tweet for trying to block a visit by a Conservative commentator. Where do you draw the line when it comes to free speech? Well, we make no apologies for saying that there's no place in Australia to import uh, hate speech. Uh, hate speech is divisive uh, for Australia and it uh, has no place. Uh, this particular gentleman, Raheem Kassam, uh, is someone who has suggested that Nicola Sturgeon, Scotland's First Minister, should have her legs taped together so that she can't reproduce. Uh, this is not someone who's just talking about uh, a political way forward where there are legitimate differences. Uh, this is someone who's an extremist and we make no apologies for Christina Keneally's statements as the Home Affairs shadow uh, that we should be blocking uh, this person from entering Australia, just as the government have blocked in the past other extremists. The concern here is that uh, this gentleman speaking at uh, a conference along with uh, Liberal Party uh, members, uh, and uh, the question here is one for Scott Morrison as well, about what sort of debate he wants in this country. Are you comfortable with... Donald Trump's family intervening in Australian politics? Well, that's a matter for them, frankly. Uh, they uh, make their, their own judgments. Uh, but I think that the Australian people understand that it's up to us to determine what we see as respectful debate. I frankly don't want to go down uh, the road that we're seeing in many countries, including the current debate in the United States, uh, can be uh, at times very divisive as well. And I don't think it augurs well for the uh, cohesiveness of our nation if we have that sort of uh, extremist talk, such as uh, uh, presented by this uh, gentleman uh, and the way that he's engaged in British politics, coming here. Mike Pompeo, the Secretary of State, arrives this weekend. The, the Prime Minister is visiting Washington in, in a month or so. In terms of the broader US alliance, are you comfortable with where things are at in the context of uh, the US asking us to do something else, a further request in, say, military support against Iran, for example, are you comfortable that the government won't be pressured into doing something because of the volatility and unpredictability of the president? Well, well I'll be meeting with uh, uh, Mr Pompeo on Sunday and I, I look forward to that meeting. I'll be meeting the Defence Secretary on Monday morning. Uh, the US alliance is an important thing for Australia. It's one of the, the three pillars of our foreign policy. Our alliance with the United States, engagement with the region, and as far as Labor's concerned, also multilateral forums such as the United Nations. And our relationship between Australia and the United States is greater than one between individuals. It's nation to nation, and it's been important for us. Uh, what I want to see on the international stage is a peaceful resolution uh, to uh, the current disputes which are there uh, with Iran. Uh, I don't think it is in the world's interest, including Australia, to see uh, that escalated in terms of military conflict. And I'm certainly hopeful uh, that uh, that will be the outcome. We know the President, though, can be volatile in terms of his treatment of allies as well. If Australia were to say no to any such request on Iran, for example, that could put you know, Australia in the bad books when it comes to President well, Trump. Well, we're, we're, we're a sovereign nation and we should make any decisions at any time based upon our, our own national interests. The United States are our very important allies and I think... Uh, President Trump has somewhat surprisingly uh, developed uh, a friendship with North Korea in order to advance uh, a peaceful resolution that was looking very volatile uh, at one stage, not, not that long ago. That's been a good thing, in my view, and I'm certainly hopeful. It's certainly not in the, the interest of the United States to get into a situation of armed conflict with Iran, which is a, a significant uh, nation in its own right. A couple of other um, local issues now. Latest uh, terror laws that have been reported on the News Corp papers today. This seems to cover a small cohort under 
legal complication. Has it, Labor been briefed on these particular laws that are going to Parliament? Uh, no, we, we haven't, or, or I haven't been, but there's a, a raft of, uh, of laws uh, coming forward. Uh, this is a government that uh, hasn't been great when it comes to appropriate consultation. Our national security uh, legislation and, and it should be bipartisan uh, wherever possible. Uh, so certainly uh, that will be examined by uh, the, the National uh, Security and Intelligence Committee that's been uh, established that before recent times has operated on, on a bipartisan basis. Uh, before this term, uh, we've seen all of the recommendations of that joint parliamentary committee adopted. I think that is the appropriate uh, way to go forward. And, and I'm somewhat disappointed that Prime Minister Morrison has broken uh, with the position that was adopted under Prime Ministers Turnbull and Abbott. On to uh, the Crown Casino controversy, government agencies and Crown to be under the scrutiny of the Crime Commission. Is this something that would potentially, this episode, come under the scrutiny of a, of a corruption commission federally if you know, what, the Parliament does agree as expected to one? Well, we've just moved in Parliament a resolution to bring on uh, the government's position of what they promised, which was a National Integrity Commission. It is of concern to us that uh, after uh, the May 18 election, we still have not only no legislation, it's not even on the notice paper, it's not listed for debate this year. And that's why this morning uh, in Parliament, uh, literally as we speak, uh, Labor through our Shadow Attorney General Mark Dreyfus have moved a suspension of standing orders in order to call upon the government to bring forward that legislation. It's very clear that there's a support out there in the Australian public for a National Integrity Commission, that uh, we need to, to uh, ensure that there's continued confidence in our institutions and a capacity to have appropriate investigations uh, by a body at the national level. What, why didn't Labor back the parliamentary inquiry into Crown? Because a parliamentary committee doesn't have the capacity of the, uh, the, the standing uh, body that uh, Minister Porter has recommended will investigate. That has the powers of a standing royal commission. Yeah. A parliamentary committee would have actually been weaker. It would have been a, a, a talk fest. They don't have the same power, uh, whereas uh, the... Uh, the, the body that is looking at this, that has oversight, sure. uh, will be able to really compel uh, investigation, do proper investigation to get the bottom of, uh, of what's occurred Is here. it concerning to you that, that the hotline, the special access and so on, expedited visas for high rollers? Well, we'll wait and see what, what the details are. But uh, there is... Uh, Nothing unusual in, in some circumstances of people uh, getting business visas to Australia. There's a whole range of ways in which people can get visas to Australia who are bringing money uh, to, uh, to Australia to, to invest or uh, I'm not sure of what all the circumstances are, which is why there needs to be a proper investigation into this rather than second-guessing based upon innuendo. But it's also why you do need that National Integrity Commission so that people can have confidence that, they're not, that on an ongoing basis uh, matters can be referred to it. You have brought a, a different approach to Parliament. You've obviously been around it long enough, uh, but uh, sharp questions, you're wanting to put the focus on the answers, obviously, without any preambles. So we know your approach to question time. When a, when a voter is going to know the Albanese vision for the country? <laughs> Uh, that, that will evolve out uh, over a period of time, but I think people do know what my values are. Uh, I'm a progressive. Uh, I want to shape change uh, to uh, move the country forward. I'm concerned that Australia's treading water at the moment. Uh, we have enormous potential as a nation, but in order to do that, uh, we need to address some fundamental issues. The first, of course, is economy and jobs has to be the priority. And to do that... We need to invest in infrastructure. We need to invest in people as well. We need to identify uh, where the future jobs will come from. Seems to me that we're not making the most of our assets. What we do is we dig up resources, take lithium, for example, which is a big growth 
uh, industry. Uh, we're exporting that and exporting everything else that can go into a solar battery uh, and then importing it back once it's been uh, value added to overseas in terms of manufacturing. What I want to see is how we maximise the benefit of our natural assets right here in Australia. And, and what's your message to the aspirational voter then that seemed to walk away from Labor at the recent election? Well, that what Labor has always been about is aspiration. Uh, what, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a living example. I grew up in a, a public housing uh, house in, in Camperdown, the son of a single mum who was encouraged to uh, finish school. I was the first person in my family to finish school, let alone go to university. My mother wanted a better life for me. So you think you can win, the, win that, that cohort absolutely. back? Absolutely. That, yep. That's what people want. What Australia's about mm. is uh, making sure, and, and all Australians want their kids to have more opportunities in life than they had. Uh, they also want uh, uh, to have an environment that's more pristine than the one that they enjoy now, which is why climate change action is so necessary. But when we talk about aspiration, I think they want something else as well. It's not just about individualism. I think that Australians aspire to themselves and their kids doing better, but their broader family, their neighbours, mm. their community and indeed the nation doing better as well. And I think that's a bit of a distinction between Labor's view of aspiration mm. uh, being a broader concept than uh, the current government that seems to be all about individualism and if people get left behind then that's uh, just a product of trickle-down economics. Uh, we believe that the government has a role in lifting everyone up, not just leaving some people behind because if you leave the market to just let rip, the market has no conscience. The market can provide a, a, a very important role uh, but it's not uh, great at distributional issues. And what we want to make sure is that every Australian has the opportunity to lift themselves up in life. Mr Albanese, great to see you. Appreciate your time. Thanks. Thanks, Kieran.